Good morning, my name is Katherine Boyles. We are so glad you're here today. If you're in the Commons, start making your way into the auditorium because in about two minutes, we will begin with an amazing worship set followed by an excellent message. Again, we're so glad you're here and welcome to Crestview. Good morning, church. Would you stand with us? Happy Easter. Let's worship together.
excited about today the opportunity to baptize several different folks today it's a great Easter and a, what a great way to just testify about the resurrection of Jesus Christ so Esmeralda we are going to have you go first and if you'll make your way down here let me step down there you go perfect we'll turn around this other way Esmeralda because your mom we're doing this for your mom Esmeralda <laughs> tell us why you're getting baptized today Okay, that's awesome. We're so excited for you. What a special, special day this is. Esmeralda, because of your commitment to Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in the newness of life. Congratulations. It's awesome. Now come on down. All right, Jimmy, get you right here. This is Jimmy Lee, and Jimmy, we're excited about you guys both getting baptized today. Tell us why you're getting baptized. Get closer with the Lord. That's awesome. Jimmy, because you do want to get closer to the Lord and make this commitment, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism and raise the walk in the of life. Okay, brother. All right, we'll get you right here. And you can kind of take my place back here. All right, that's awesome. All right, Sarah's going to get baptized right now. Jimmy's going to do that. Sarah, why are you getting baptized? To get, close, to get close to God. That's awesome. All right, because, Sarah, you have committed your life to Jesus Christ, you are now being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism. That's all right. Raised to walk in newness of life. Perfect. You did great. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. All right, this is Junior. Junior, we're excited about you getting baptized today, my brother. Tell us why you're getting baptized, and you got some of the family that's going to get baptized with you. That's awesome. Because you have given your life to God, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. Congratulations, brother. You want to stay right here? You want to stand right here and just... All right, Seth. We can go up here. Seth, we're going to go right here. All right. Seth, so excited to see Junior get baptized. And now it's your turn. Tell us why you're getting baptized. All right. Because you do love God and because you do love Jesus. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. And raised to walk in newness of life. There you go, buddy. I'm going to stand by your dad. 
All right, Malachi, your turn. There you go, buddy. All right, this is Malachi. Malachi, we're excited about you getting baptized. Tell us why you're getting baptized. I love God and my parents and my mommy. All right, that's awesome. Because you do love God, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk. Way to go, buddy. (laughs) That's awesome. Congratulations, Dad. Hey, Kobe. You can stand right there, Kobe. We're so excited about Kobe getting baptized, and uh, Jenna's going to baptize her son. So, Kobe, tell us why you are getting baptized. Because you do believe in Jesus, we are baptizing you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. Congratulations. All right, yeah, you can step down, Jacob. All right, Jacob, you can turn around this way. That's perfect. All right, and you're going to baptize him? That's perfect. All right, Jacob, we're so excited about you getting baptized today. This is awesome, and for your mom to baptize you is even more awesome. Tell us why you are getting baptized. Because I know Jesus is That's awesome. That is so great. Because of your commitment to Jesus, you're being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. There you go, buddy. Congratulations. Stay right here, man. Tegan, we're so excited you're getting baptized today and that your dad is going to get to baptize you. It's just really awesome. So, Tegan, tell us why you're getting baptized. So I can always be with God when it gets really tough in life. That is awesome. Tegan, because you have committed your life to Jesus, you're being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. Congratulations, buddy. I will stand right up here. Just as we're excited about you getting baptized, buddy. It's going to be great. Your dad's going to stand right here. You can turn right here. There you go. Perfect. If you want to stand right here by him, that's perfect. All right, Justice, tell us why you're getting baptized. Because I have Jesus in my heart. That's awesome. Because you do have Jesus in your heart, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. And raised to walk in newness of life. There you go, buddy. Congratulations. All right, Stacy, one step down. All right, this is Stacy. Stacy, we're so excited you're getting baptized today, and Wyatt's going to get baptized, so tell us why you are getting baptized. To publicly give my love to Jesus. That is awesome. Because you have decided to publicly tell people about your commitment to Jesus, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. Awesome. If you want to stand here, we'll wipe. Just come on in, what? We'll go a step down right here. Perfect. And this is Wyatt, and we're so excited you're getting baptized today. Tell us why you are. Christianity. That is awesome. That is so great. Because of your commitment to Jesus, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. Congratulations. Congratulations, y'all. One step up. There you go. This is so exciting uh, to be part of this celebration with these folks who have committed their life to Christ and have let you know about that today. And so let me pray for us, and then we're going to continue in worship. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for these folks that have stood before us and said, I follow Jesus, and I want everyone to know. We thank you for their stories, some great, great stories of how you've worked in our lives, and we thank you for them standing before us and just telling that story. And so we're grateful for your love. We're grateful how you change everything. We pray that you would be with them in the days ahead and that you would bless them. And all this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in worship. Alone in my 
sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope, no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained my orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was a rest and my life began Can you help us sing it, church? Oh, your grace so free washes over It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new now. Life begins with you. Release from my chains. I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom. He's faithful. Oh 
sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ that's the reason why we're here this morning is because we have victory to stand in Christ if you believe maybe this is your first time and those who are watching online if you put your faith in Jesus Everything changes. And so we welcome you. We welcome you this morning. On Friday, we looked at the cross and what that did for us. And now on this Easter Sunday morning, we look at the resurrection. And it's our prayer that you would see the gospel so clear that he loves you. In spite of everything that you've been through, there's hope for you. And I just want to remind you that if you put your faith in Jesus, I have good news for you that you're on the winning side. We see in scripture that he has won the victory for us. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you did for us during this time. And God, it's our prayer that we can reflect and remember the cross. And not only the cross, but we can remember that the tomb is empty and that you're alive, breathing, and you're well. And Lord, I pray that if anyone has come into this place, God, that has been walking in darkness, that they would see your life and that they too can be alive in you. And we believe that you've already won the war. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Are you happy to be at church? Amen. Let's continue worshiping. That's mine today That Jesus Christ has won So I can face tomorrow Tomorrow's in your hands All I need you will provide Just like you always have Can you help us sing? I'm fighting a battle You've already won No matter what comes my way I will overcome I don't know what you're doing But I know what you've done I'm fighting Bad. Oh, you've already won. There's mercy. There's mercy in the waiting. Man of war today. 
Crestview and happy Easter. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we're so glad you're here to worship with us. In your worship folder, you will find our connection cards. We encourage you to fill it out digitally by using the QR code on the back. You can also fill out the card manually and put it in the baskets that will get passed down your row at the end of service, or just put it in the giving boxes on your way out. If you're new to Crestview or this is your first time visiting, welcome. Make sure you visit Crestview Information located in the Commons and grab a complimentary tumbler and specialty coffee drink on us. We would love to connect with you and answer any questions you have. Ladies, we are so excited to invite each of you to our Women's Spring Fling on April 22nd here at Crestview. 
Join us from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for a full day of fellowship, food, incredible speakers, and fun crafts. Tickets are available for purchase after service in the Commons. You won't want to miss this amazing opportunity to bond with your favorite group of women. Make sure to get your tickets before April 16th. And coming up on April 29th, join us for a fun-filled day of bikes and bubbles. Kids, bring your bikes for an exciting course and then get creative at our chalk and bubble stations. Hot dogs will be provided for everyone. This free community event will be held from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in the Crestview parking lot. We can't wait to see you there. If you need something to listen to on your drive to work, check out the Crestview podcast with Jordan and Pastor John as they discuss their thoughts on each message. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and online at crestview.church. Now grab your Bible or phone and your message notes and prepare your heart for this special message on Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. We are glad that each one of you guys are here, and you guys are dressed a little better than normal today. I just want to point that out. You guys look uh, like you dressed up, and that's really nice, really good. Uh, we are so glad that you are here. It's an exciting day. We baptize, obviously, in this service. We have several other folks who can get baptized today. It's going to be a great day. Well, we are finishing up, actually, a series of messages where we have been asking really one simple question. And the simple question that we've been asking that is also a life-changing question is this. Who is Jesus? And we looked at kind of the things Jesus answered to that question. He said he was the gate and the vine. He was the Lord and the king. Uh, He was the good shepherd. Several things that he gave as an answer to that. And we're going to look at one of his other answers that really goes along with Easter and goes along with resurrection that we celebrate today. And that is that he is the hope of new life. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So, who is Jesus really? Now, a big idea of this series is that throughout time, people have had different ideas about Jesus. I think everybody has some sort of idea about Jesus. You know, uh, Christians would say he's the son of God. Other people say, no, he's just a good teacher. He's, you know, that kind of a thing. But over time, artists have drawn pictures of Jesus to try to answer the question, who is Jesus? So I want to show you some of these pictures, some of these paintings over the years that have been done about Jesus. And some of these are going to be possibilities, I think. Some of them, no way this is who Jesus was. So we're going to look at some of these. Here's the first one. I call this one Veterinarian Jesus. Um, this is Jesus kind of hugging the sheep. We have no mention in the Bible of Jesus ever hugging a sheep, but it's you know, showing the idea of him being the good shepherd. So I think that's kind of the idea here. Here's the second one. The second one here is dreamy Jesus. I don't, I don't know. It's a little creepy. I don't, I don't know. But here's the third one. <laughs> now, this one's called homeboy Jesus or... Jesus is my buddy, all right? That is not who Jesus is, by the way. That is a wrong answer to who Jesus is. And here's a fourth picture. Now, the one thing we know about that picture is that is not how Jesus looked. That is the blonde Jesus. And Jesus was not blonde. Uh, He didn't look like this. So there's all kinds of different ideas. And so what we're going to do is try to answer that question, who is Jesus today? And to look at how he's the hope of new life. And so I want to invite you to turn to Mark chapter 16. In your Bible, it's Matthew, Mark, second book in the New Testament. You can get that there on your phone if you've got the Bible app. And you can just kind of turn there. You can just Google it if you want to. Mark 16. Go to Mark 16. We're going to read the story. And then we're going to circle back and look at some lessons for us on this Easter Sunday. Okay? So let's look at it together. This is Mark chapter 16, and we're going to start in verse 1. Here's what it says. 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought uh, spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Now verse 5. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You were looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Then verse 8. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now all the Gospels, the Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all tell us that the first people that showed up at the tomb on Sunday morning were the women, the women followers of Jesus. And they find the tomb empty. They hear this message from the angel And what we have in these verses is really the foundation of that Jesus is the source of new life, this hope of new life. And so let's look at these lessons. First lesson is this, that the resurrection challenges you to decide. And what it challenges you to decide, and Mark wants to challenge you. He wants to challenge you, is this true or is this false? Did this happen? Did this not happen? You need to decide. Every person needs to decide about that. So let's circle back to verse 6 of Mark 16. Here's what the angel said. Do not be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Now here's a backstory. Decades before Jesus, decades after Jesus, there were a bunch of messianic movements. And messianic just simply means this is the Messiah, the Son of God, and people would go, it's me. And people go, I think it is them. And they would follow that person. Now, how, here's how every movement ended, those messianic movements, there are a bunch of them, is that the leader would get killed, maybe executed if he took on the Romans, and then the people would all disappear. Everybody would go home. Well, that didn't work out. Didn't really work out for our leader very well. It really isn't legit, so we're out of here. That's how every movement went. It's how Jesus' movement went to that Friday when he was executed on a cross. But what made the difference was that all of a sudden his followers said he was alive. He was risen, and we saw him, and that's what made the whole difference. You see, it didn't collapse. In fact, it exploded in growth. Christianity today is the world's biggest faith of any other faith. So how did that happen? I mean, why in the world did that happen? Why, isn't, why wasn't like every other, there are a bunch of these going on, why wasn't like every other kind of movement? What made it different? Christians would say, well, the reason is because Jesus was alive. His followers saw him, but a bunch of other people saw him. There were actually eyewitnesses to this fact, this is really legit, this is really real, and this is what changes everything. Now, today in the Permian Basin, if you kind of poll people, lots of people would go, no, I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. Uh, I don't know that I have a, maybe an explanation But it's probably a legend or just a story that got passed down. I mean, it's not, I mean, that doesn't happen. People don't come alive. There's no way that that can happen. But if you say it didn't happen, you've got to have some sort of alternative explanation for why these folks started telling everybody about it, why these folks who were followers of Jesus were happily willing to die for the fact that this happened. And why in the world would they do all those things? Well, Mark is going to say to you, if you just think it's a legend, let me challenge you on that. And what he does is, back in verse 1, he gave us the names of these women who came and showed up on Sunday morning. And 
the reason would he gave the names and very specific names is more than likely most of them, I mean, most of them were probably still alive when Mark wrote this. And it was kind of like, go ask them. Go check it out. I mean, they were eyewitnesses. This angel talked to them, and then later they saw Jesus. And so go, go ask them. Go check this out. Now, there's another reason. There was a guy named Celsus. He was a Greek pagan philosopher. He was anti-Christianity. Okay, he said, oh, there's this thing called Christianity, but it's just a fraud. It's, a, it's not even true. And the reason, his argument for why Christianity could not be true was because the first people who were eyewitnesses were women. And he said, I did not say this, he said, women are just hysterical. So you can't trust them. And all the men disciples went, that sounds good to me. And that was his argument, okay? Obviously, women were very marginalized in that time. If you were a woman, you couldn't even give testimony in a court, okay? This is just kind of the viewpoint of back then. It was pretty bad. And so Celsa said, so Christianity couldn't be true. But here's the deal. If that's all right, and that was a viewpoint back then, if you were making this story up, You wouldn't make it, well, the women were the first ones, unless they were the first ones. You wouldn't use that, because everybody would go, no, that's not true. Just like Celsus did. But if they truly were the first eyewitnesses, then that's why you would tell that kind of story. Mark challenges you to decide. Now, part of this story, and, and Mark tells us this in his gospel, Jesus kept saying to the disciples over and over again, he kept saying the same thing. Hey, I'm going to be killed. Three days later, I'm going to rise. Now, they heard him, but I had to be going, there goes that Jesus again. I don't know what he's talking about. Because he did it over and over again, but then who shows up Sunday morning? You know, these women show up, not one male disciple in sight, okay? Okay. Now, let's look at where Jesus said that. We're going to go through these kind of quick. Uh, It's going to come up on the screen. In Mark 8, 31, Jesus is teaching them, and he says, And that he must be killed, and after three days rise again. Then Mark 9, 31. He's teaching disciples again. He says, They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. Then Mark 10, 34. And three days later he will rise. And it's kind of weird. Jesus says it, but they don't show up. You'd think somebody went, well, Jesus died. You remember when he said that thing about three days later? We ought to go check that out. And nobody went to check it out. These women came to check it out, but they didn't think Jesus was going to be gone. They have these spices to basically do this burial preparation And so they don't expect him gone. Nobody expects him gone at all. Now, you'd think that would happen. Let's go now, though, to verse 7 of Mark 16. The angel kind of, you know, kind of gives them a little nudge here when the angel says, Go tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. And notice this last part. Just as he told you, remember? Why did Mark include all that? I mean, he wouldn't include it if it was all made up. He'd go, yeah, well, they, were, they, they all showed up because they knew Jesus. No, no, no. The disciples didn't believe. They thought, that's impossible. No person can die and be alive again. Impossible. We've never seen it happen. We don't believe it. We don't think so. It's got to be not real. They didn't believe. But then they did believe. What made the difference? What made the difference was they saw Jesus. We have a lot of people who see Jesus. Some that were followers, some that weren't followers. They see Jesus. And people went, I don't know what that's all about. And all of a sudden they change. They are totally different. Now, if you don't go with the resurrection being true, and again, Mark says you've got to decide. Don't not decide. Make sure you decide. In fact, in this series, Jesus always does the same thing Mark does here. 
You need to decide about me. Who am I? I'm either a big liar, I'm mentally unbalanced, or I'm who I say I am. But don't kind of go with door number three, which is, oh, he's a good guy. He's going, no, I'm not a good guy. I'm either a liar, I'm mentally unbalanced, or I am the Son of God, and I am who I say I am. You pick. You've got to decide. And Mark takes us down the same sort of road. And then these followers of Jesus die for their faith after this. Every one of the disciples, except for one, dies and is executed for their faith. And you go, uh, you know, if it was a fake, I'd go, ah, eh, just, okay, let me tell you the real story. But none of them do that. They all die. The first lesson is the resurrection challenges you to decide, is it true or is it false? Here's the second lesson. The resurrection gives you grace to change your heart. I want us to look back at verse 7. Here's what the angel said again. But go tell his disciples and Peter he's going ahead of you, and then you will see him just as he told you. Now he tells them, go tell the disciples. Do you see the grace there? Do you see the forgiveness there? You know, it's because of what he didn't say. The angel didn't say, hey, you backstabbing cowards who ran away when Jesus gets arrested and, and when he gets crucified, you guys that have been terrible, I'll tell you what, you guys, if you grovel a little bit, then maybe Jesus will take you back into his movement. Jesus, that's not Jesus' message. Jesus' message is, yeah, you messed up real bad, but you know I'm going to forgive you. Jesus doesn't operate how you and I would operate. It's kind of like, no, you gotta, you got to prove it first. That's not what happens here. Jesus goes, I forgive you so that you can repent, so that you can change. That's what I'm going to do in this situation. And then don't miss this part. It says, go tell his disciples, and one disciple is mentioned specifically. And that is who? Peter. Peter. Now, why Peter? Why by himself? Because I think if the message was just from the angel, hey, go all tell the disciples to go meet Jesus, Peter would have heard that and gone, you guys go ahead, I'm, 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 I'm out. I'm not going. Why? Because he had denied Jesus three times. I was talking to my four-year-old granddaughter, and we were talking about the story of Easter, and she was explaining it to me. I learned a lot of things. And she said to me, and the highlight of the Easter story for her was this. Well, Jesus had a friend named Peter. And they were good friends. But then Peter didn't tell the truth. And then cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo. The rooster crowed three times. And then they were not friends anymore. The end. I thought, yeah, yeah, that's really pretty good because that's exactly what happened. That was a signal that he had denied Jesus so many different times. But Jesus goes, you know, make sure Peter knows I want him to show up. You know what that is? That's grace. And you know we all need that. You know, because a lot of us are Peters. We've messed up, and we have denied, and we've run away, and we've done our own thing, and we've done everything to run away from God. And don't forget to tell Peter, because I want him to show up. Now, Jesus is basically saying, Peter, I want you to show up. Even you, you jerk. I mean, because he was. Peter was. He was a huge failure. But what does Peter become? The biggest leader in the early Christian church. You know, only God does that. You know, we go, I'm out on you. God doesn't do that. He gives us grace. He gives us forgiveness. And we think it's, you know, that it's all about God wants us to be so good. And it's, God looks at us and it's all about our strengths and how much we know or, or what we do right. But God goes, no, no. Let me tell you, salvation comes when you realize you're weak and you need a Savior. When you know you need forgiveness. That you know in your own strength you can't make it. That you need a Savior. That's when salvation comes, and resurrection says we have a Savior who's alive, who is willing to give us grace, and that changes our heart. 
I give you grace, Jesus says, to change your heart, to change you. Second lesson is resurrection gives you grace to change your heart. And here we're going to just kind of wrap all this together with a final question. Here's the question. If the resurrection really did happen, what does that mean for you? There's one verse I really want to use to answer that question, and it's found in Matthew. This is after the resurrection. Jesus' disciples are seeing him. He's about to leave, go back to heaven. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Now here's the last part I want us to focus in on. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Here's the big takeaway. What does it mean for you and me that Jesus is risen, that there's a resurrection, that we celebrate Easter Sunday? It's that Jesus is with us. Now there's several ways that he's with us. He's with us in his word in the Bible. When you read scripture, let me tell you, Jesus will help you see things. I've read things before that I've read maybe a couple times before and all of a sudden it's brand new. He is with us when we read scripture and when we share his message. Take a look with me at this verse. This is um, Ephesians 2.17. Paul's writing, and he says, talking about Jesus, he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Now, he's talking about this place in Greece called Ephesus. He writes this letter to them, but Jesus never went there. So how could that be true? Because anytime we share the message of Jesus, Jesus is there. So he is present with us. He is with you always. But there's a second way. And the second way is Jesus is with you in Christian community. Now, let me tell you what that means. That just means when you're with other people who are Christians, and you help them, they help you, they, you help each other live this life that God has for us, and Jesus is right there in the middle of that process. It says there, and I want you to look with me at, again, verse 20 in the last, last part, and surely I am with you always. Now, A little English lesson real quick. Is that you, singular, one person, or is that you, a whole bunch of people? See, the English language isn't real clear about that. We just say you, and it can be a bunch of people, or it can be one person. But we in Texas have done something to improve the English language, to make that very clear, all right? We have a word that kind of clears all that questions up, and what is the word? Y'all. Let me tell you, the correct translation of this word here is, and surely I am with y'all always, okay? There's a Texan version of the Bible, and there it is. It's everybody. And here's the point. When we're with each other, Jesus has something for us from other people. People who encourage us, people who pray for us, There's a book by a guy named Dietrich Bonhoeffer called Life Together. And basically he says this. How do you, when you doubt that God will forgive you, how how do you get past that? When you have a lot of guilt in your life and a lot of regret, how do you get past that? He says, here's how you get past it. Jesus uses other people to remind us God really does forgive you. He really does have a plan for you, and your guilt can be given to him. And sometimes we just need somebody to tell us, somebody to remind us. And so it's that process of us together. That's why it's so important that you've got some group in your life, whether there's some people you have lunch with or just some friends you get with regularly or whatever it is, you need that in your life. And Jesus is right there. I am with you. Always. I'm with y'all always in that situation. And then there's a third way. Jesus is with you to the end. Again, in verse 20, it says, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So, at the end of your life, you believe in the resurrection of Jesus. 
Do you place your faith in him or not? If you have, if you have, at the end of your personal story, then he'll be there. He'll be there. Which means whenever the end of your story is, that'll be a happy ending. Because he will be there. Now, you've got a choice about that. And to kind of summarize this, we have to decide. And so you can go with, that's nah, not true. There's no, you know, Easter's just some kind of made-up story. It's like a legend. It got passed down. didn't really happen. You can go with that. What that means then is this life is all that there is. That eventually we just turn to dust. That eventually this world, you know, maybe gets burned up by the sun or something happens like that. Everything gets wiped out, gets destroyed. There's all the wrongs that have happened in this life. They're never going to be made right. Nothing's ever going to have things fixed in any sort of way. And that's how it is. And you go to a movie and the movie might have, you know, a bunch of like, how are they going to get out of that? And then they get out of that and you go, whoa, that's a great happy ending. I didn't know how they get rescued. But that's not how real life ever is. Because you go, that's just not true. But if the resurrection is true, you know, that happy ending is possible because Jesus is alive. And that makes all the difference. All the difference in the world. you got to decide. It's one or the other. And you just got to be honest enough with yourself to say, this is what I'm going to decide. This is my decision, my choice about that. Now, also, he will be with you at the end of the age. One day, everything is over. Okay? There's this final day. And he's going to be present there. And so, again, he's with us even at that time. So, let me ask you. Do you want to believe in that? Now, we looked at, you know, deciding. And, you know, sure, I want to believe in that. I, I, that would be, that'd be great to believe in that. I mean, who wouldn't want to believe in that? All right, sure. But I don't know if it really happened. But that's why we also talked about some of the evidence You've got to look at the evidence and go, and you've got to have an alternate explanation and say, okay, this whole movement of people that became millions of people, it always was a lie, and it's always going to be a lie. That's, your, that's a choice you can make. Or, or it's true, and everything is possible, and everything points to it being true, and that changes everything. And gives us the hope of new life. Today, the biggest question Mark wants you to know about and to think about is, is it true? True or false, it really happened. I'm going to ask you if you would to bow your heads with me. We're just going to have a time of prayer. And here on this Easter Sunday, whatever you need to bring to Jesus, do that right now. You can just pray right there in your seat. There may be something that's weighing you down. There may be something you're trying to decide. You may be dealing with that question. You've been kind of asking questions about that question for a long time. Whatever it is you need to just maybe give over to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need to give you this. I'm trying to run that, and I can't run that anymore. Whatever you need to do, whatever commitment you need to make, whatever next step you need to take, we saw a lot of people take a next step of baptism today. God always has a next step for you. What is your next step today? Let's just have a time of silence, and then I'm going to close us in prayer in just a minute. We thank you for this greatest gift of Easter. And Lord, I, I pray that everyone here, those online, that we would just decide. 
and let that decision guide our life. Is it true? Is it false? Is it real? Is it not real? But we know because, and we believe because Jesus is alive, there's this hope of new life, of grace and forgiveness and mercy, and that Jesus is with us always. And we're grateful for that truth that you share with us through your word. Lord, we thank you so much that you've loved us in amazing ways. We thank you because you're with us. We can face anything, even those hard and difficult times of life. So I pray you'd be with everyone in a very real way, even right now in this moment. And Lord, help us to simply turn to you, take our next step towards you. And that's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We're having an opportunity right now for you to turn in that connection card. You can also use that QR code today or anytime during the week. And here's what I want to ask you to do. If you'd help us out uh, to gather up those connection cards and also to be able to give, if you'd like to give right now and give your offering, you're going to find at the end of your row, on the right side of the row, there is a basket. If you're at the right end of a row, grab that basket and start passing it down your row. If you just get it started, that would be great. The usher is going to pick those up, so just go ahead and pass those down from the right end of the row to the left. That would be great. That will help us out in some really, really great ways. Um, also, next Sunday, we begin a new series of messages looking at what the world needs now. And so let's take a look at this video right now. Now that made some of you want to go grab a smoothie on your way home, and so feel free if you'd like to do that. That would be great. A couple things before we go. First of all, uh, we have a photographer and kind of a backdrop set up in this corner right over here, this direction out in the commons. And so we encourage you to make your way out there, and you can get a family picture, and those are just available to you. All you need to do is just go on out there, and we have that photographer who will take your picture. Also, I want to encourage you ladies, on April the 22nd, we're going to be having this ladies gathering. We have several community leaders that will be speaking to us. It's going to be a great time to connect with some other ladies. And that's all going to be going on on April the 22nd. And then you saw the information about Bikes and Bubbles. And basically, that's a family event. And I want to invite you to be part of that. You can see the information on the screen. It's been so great to have you guys with us today. God bless you. You are dismissed.